The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad you're here today. Um, we've got about half of the people that signed up for this webinar on right now, so I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes, um, maybe until about 10.02, to, uh, to get on this webinar. So if you got to do something real quick before we get started, go right ahead. We will start at 10.02. All right, it is now 10.02, we will get started, and if people continue to join us, then hey, that's all right. Again, good morning, everyone. My name is Liz Bogner. I am the Volunteer Experience Lead with Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan. Training and volunteer recognition is my game, and I would like to recognize you all for being such amazing Girl Scout leaders and being committed to the idea of continuing Girl Scouting, even though everything in the world is so crazy right now. Um, it's it's a it's a big ask really for for you to kind of continue on business as usual for the sake of the girls and the thing is it's not going to be business as usual because we just we we have to adapt we have to change things up um, so we're going to go over some strategies today that are focused both on things that you can do and also things that caregivers can do to bring Girl Scout home. So um, I'm joined here by my colleague, Courtney Dennings. She's going to be running the chat log for us, um, trying to answer some of your questions, and she's going to bring those uh, to my attention as we go along. Um, so everybody say hi to Courtney virtually. And um, one thing I want to make very, very clear before we get started today is that all GSSEM staff, we are all available to help you. We are here for you. But since this is this is a whole new world right now um we might not be able to answer your questions right away because um it's in a way it's sort of like the blind leading the blind but we are trying our hardest to do things to support you um despite there being a lot of unknowns so that said i want to hear your questions today so feel free to type those in the chat log um courtney will field those as we go along i'll stop her every so often and um, if anything remains unanswered by the time we're done here, I will record that question and we'll get you an answer as soon as we possibly can. So let's get into it here, friends. Okay, so today what we're gonna talk about is number one, we wanna explore the volunteer toolkit and um, how we can get caregivers access to the volunteer toolkit because that's kind of like a lifeline for for both you and them as they're executing girl scout programming at home because it it might not be a possibility for you to do it and that's okay um so we want to be able to establish volunteer toolkit for caregiver use as well make sure it's all set up ready to go and then we also want to navigate um, some resources that you can use with your troops because we got a lot of new stuff that's available to you that you guys can take advantage of. So that's what we're going to cover here today. Now, 
what I want to do is, Courtney, if you wouldn't mind unmuting everybody, um, I just, not everybody has to introduce themselves. I just, if you want to, um, just kind of tell me your name, your troop number, and what you're hoping to get out of this webinar. Don't be shy, we don't bite. Okay, everyone has the power to unmute themselves now. Um, this is Jenny Dumas. Um, it's Troop 10001, and we are in Flushing, which is in Genesee County. I'll jump in. I'm a neighbor. This is Barb Olszewski. I'm Troop 71627 in Clio. All right. Hey, what are you guys right. hoping to get out of this webinar? How we can keep Girl Scouts going for the kids. All right. Yeah, how to keep it still interesting when they're still trying to navigate school stuff now online. And then obviously I don't want Girl Scouts to feel like an extra like challenge to them. <laughs> right. I want it to be fun. The the at the the at home challenge is already a good start. I have to say that. Yeah, we'll definitely talk a little bit about that so everyone's up to speed on um, what the what the go at home challenge is. Hi. Hi, this is Cheryl from Trenton, um, Troop 76277, and I am a brand new leader. So this we had a first virtual meeting um, this past Tuesday, so it was my first meeting as the troop leader, and it was virtual. Wow. Aww. Hi, I, I don't know if you guys heard me a minute ago. I'm Stephanie Eaton, Troop 75002. Um, for me, I'm working full time from home and helping my kids, a high schooler and a middle schooler. So for me, I'm trying to understand what tools are available because I am unbelievably overwhelmed to wear Girl mm -hmm. Scouts, although I want it to be super important for the rest of the, the troop. Um, it's, it's, it's so overwhelming right now. So right, me, I, right. I, I can't manage it all. So yeah, but, but but I, there's tools. Oh, I'm so sorry for interrupting you, but I, I'm, no I think you're going to find that having older girls is actually an advantage right now. And we'll talk a little no, bit no, no, about No, those are my children. Way. My children are in middle school and high school, and I'm trying to help them do schoolwork on top of then having sixth grade cadets. But even I, so, I mean, with with a sixth grade troop, I think you'll find that because they know how to navigate technology, there's a lot of things that they can do autonomously. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I just want to read Amelia put it into the chat log. She said, I'd love to use VPK for my troop. I'm a multi level troop. Will the parents grasp the concept of ind individualizing the plan to their daughter's level? And she is troop. Seven six two seven five out of Y and dot. And then everyone still should have the ability to unmute. Um, all you have to do to unmute yourself is click the little orange microphone and make it green. I'm Katie, I'm Troop 77129 out of Macomb, Michigan. And I think just like everyone else, I'm working full-time at home, working with the kids. We've got a kindergarten troop. And so just trying to keep them involved and making sure that the parents understand what they need to do to be able to help that situation and try not to make it too difficult for them. Awesome. And then David put in the chat log, um, he's having some trouble unmuting himself, but he is here from Troop 76421 to learn about how to manage the troop from a distance. Okay, sorry, I was muted there for a second. Okay, um, but I, I think Courtney just gave everybody the ability to unmute. But thank you so much, you guys, for sharing. 
Um, now I would like to want, launch that first poll and kind of get a sense of where everyone's at uh, VTK wise. Oops. All right. So if you guys could just give us a little bit of an idea as to um, whether or not you set up your, your year plan, that would be wonderful. We'll give you a minute to fill that out. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds. All right, we just about got everybody, Courtney. We have 77% voted. Um, That'll do. All righty. We can share. So what do you see? Oh, can you see it? No, I cannot. Okay, so 59% have set up the volunteer toolkit for their troop and 41% have not. Okay, so we got some VTK newbies in the audience. That is amazing. I I am um, Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan's Volunteer Toolkit admin, so the fact that we're probably going to have some new VTK users, once you guys see how cool it is, that just warms my little heart. All right, and then Courtney, could you introduce the other poll as well? Yeah. This one's about this one's about parent engagement with the volunteer toolkit for those of you who who have set up your plans. Because I think for those of you who have younger girls, um, you're going to find that you're going to need to um, to engage parents quite a bit throughout this process. So we'll give you about 30 seconds there. Sorry, I had uh, answered that polling question and I was one that don't have the toolkit, so you might have some wonky results on my screen, even though I answered that the first question. Hmm. All right, Courtney, what we got? Okay, so 100% um, do not regularly check the troop volunteer toolkit. Ooh, okay. We're going to need to change that. And I think what we're going to go over right now is um, is going to be a good way uh, to explain Volunteer Toolkit to parents. Um, this webinar actually is currently being recorded. We're going to post it online um, at the new page that we're building for our uh, virtual experience here at Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan. So if you want to go back and share this webinar with them, if you plan on having parents execute activities at home, then um, absolutely do so. All right, let's keep her moving. So nobody could have anticipated the massive impact that COVID-19 would have on our everyday lives, including Girl Scouts. So anything that we can do to bring girls some normalcy in these times of uncertainty will help girls to better cope with their circumstances. And Girl Scouts is a piece of that. So through all this craziness, Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan wants you to make sure that not only you have the tools that you need to do what you need to do as a leader, but that parents feel prepared to receive the Girl Scout baton, so to speak, from you and carry out the work that you're now unable to do now that troop meetings are on hiatus and continue building girls of courage, confidence, and character. And we all know just by virtue of being a part of Girl Scout, seeing how it's done, it's so much more than cookies, crafts, and badges. It's a way of life and it's a state of mind. 
and Girl Scouts know how to engage in community problem solving. And that's something that we're going to need a lot of when we come out of this pandemic. If we keep Girl Scouts on girls' brains, they might be able to do some amazing things to help out their community when their community needs them the most. So most of what caregivers are gonna need to do in order to implement Girl Scouts at home, if you wanna put it in their hands, is all gonna be found in the volunteer toolkit. Most of it's going to be in the meeting plan tab. Now, if I'm, if I'm using some terms that are uh, sounding like Greek to you, don't worry about it. We're gonna go through the volunteer toolkit. We're gonna see um, what all this stuff is and where it is as well. So don't worry too much about it. We're just gonna introduce some concepts and then you'll see it in action. So all the stuff can be found in the meeting plan tab. Um, and in order to get to the meeting plan tab, you first have to establish a year plan that has a bunch of meetings in it. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So the five things that we're gonna need parents to have in their hands as they're executing Girl Scouts at home is the badge requirements, the meeting overview, the activity plan, the materials list, and meeting aids. So all these things parents have access to except for one, and that's the activity plan. So you might need to share that with them, but we're gonna go through these one by one and talk about what they are. And we're gonna start with the badge requirements. So whenever any adult is working with girls on earning a piece of official insignia, whether that's a badge, a journey, an award, um, the first thing that they should do is understand what the girls need to do in order to earn whatever award that is. So let's start off by um, looking at these badge requirements. And um, if you're unfamiliar with these, if you're just getting started, all badges have five steps that need to be completed in order to earn them. Um, the only exception is daisies. Daisies are a little different. Um, they only have three steps for each badge. So there's, theirs is a little simpler and that makes sense because um, they are the youngest level of Girl Scouts. So, um, you can see these requirements if you go into the volunteer toolkit at the top of the page. Like that's, that's pretty much one of the first things you see um, right after the description of the badge. So it's usually obscured a little bit. Again, I'll show you where it is in the volunteer toolkit when we're in the live environment. Um, but if you click see more, you can kind of expand that little top section so you can see all the requirements. So let's look at some actual badge requirements. And what we're going to be doing throughout this webinar is we're going to be following the Space Science Adventurer badge for brownies. So you'll see here, there's five steps to completing the Space Science Adventurer badge. And those are meet the neighbors, see more than before, investigate the moon, be a stargazer, and celebrate and share. So just looking at those, they're not uh, the most descriptive things in the world. They're kind of vague. Um, so there are other materials that we're gonna go over that will kind of flesh out what exactly this means. Now the meeting overview, this is a document that parents should read before, um, before carrying out any activities associated with meetings. Um, some of these are set up a little differently than others. Some tell you um, basically the activities that are in the meeting. Some will tell you, okay, these are the things that you need to prepare prior to doing all these activities. And usually they're pretty simple, gathering pictures, links, and usually there's, um, there's links to different resources that are needed. So looking at Space Science Adventurer again, this isn't the whole uh, meeting overview for this meeting. Um, you can see that there's a lot of um, items in this one, but um, the reason it's so long is because there's activity choices. So down at the bottom, you see there's model the moon, make an art project, meet the moon phases. Um, those are three different activity options for the same kind of, uh, for the same badge requirement. So not all of this stuff is going to be needed, just so you're aware in case it's making your head swim. So, um, this is one of those, um, this particular meeting overview, this is one of the ones that says, okay, these are the materials that you need to prepare. And when you look at the meeting overview online, you're gonna see that uh, there's some hyperlinks, like you'll see one for um, this moon resource, moon photos, Girl Scout Promise and Law even. So those will take you to the resources that, uh, that it's referring to. 
Now, if, if people are looking at this offline, like say you download it, because you do have downloading capabilities as a troop leader, and parents should too, actually. Um, when you download the document, it's the, the links aren't going to be clickable. So um, parents will need to be in the volunteer toolkit online in order to get these resources. So make sure that they're aware of that. Uh, and then once once all these things are prepared, you can move on to doing the activities. But before you get into it, there's one more thing that I would recommend looking at, and that's the materials list. So this is going to tell you, is, these, um, is this meeting going to be feasible to do at home? And the thing is, most activities that you're going to encounter in the Volunteer Toolkit, they really don't require anything too terribly fancy. A lot of them are common household objects, but you might encounter some oddballs. Um, but I think overall you'll find that um, a lot of this stuff can be done at home with things that people have around the home. Um, but at the same time, you, you again, may encounter that one oddball thing like... Um, there, there's an activity for a model of the moon, for example, in this meeting, and that requires like a three inch styrofoam ball. Now, I don't know how many people just have three inch styrofoam balls laying around at home. Um, so you might need to improvise a little bit. Um, otherwise, you can, um, you can see if there's another activity that kind of accomplishes the same thing. But I mean, if you have to improvise, that's totally fine. As long as girls are meeting the requirements, then they're earning a badge. Now, back to Space Science Adventurer 1. Looking at the materials, they're pretty common, really. Um, you can use a lot of digital resources for this meeting. Um, healthy snack items are probably already at home. Hopefully, they're at home. Um, but yeah, basic things like paint. And if you make the right choices for um, for the different activities and meetings, like you can find activities that have um, less obscure materials than others. Now, um, back to digital resources though, um, those, like some of the things that we're gonna go over later, um, like how you can, you can host a meeting as a volunteer, um, some of those kind of things can help you to accomplish um, uh, the badge requirements. Like, for example, with Space Science Adventurer, meeting three of this badge has girls celebrate and share. If you remember, that was the fifth step of this badge. Now, caregivers could choose to host, like, a local space party, for example, and talk, about, talk to their girl about what they learned. Or you could set up a virtual party with your entire troop, and then you can have all the girls share, and you kind of got this cooperative learning sort of thing going on. So again, we'll talk about those uh, those things that are available to you here soon. So once you're determined if everything is uh, is feasible, then you're going to use the activity plan in order to conduct the meeting, or you're going to give that to parents. And this is the one thing that parents are unable to get themselves. So. Um, if you've if you've gone in and you determined, yeah, this is probably going to work for everybody else, you will need to send out that activity plan to everybody. That's super simple. You can just download the whole thing, email it out. That's that's totally fine. Very easy. Uh, so what the activity plan does is it gives prompts for how to approach activities. Um, so you'll see that there are prompts to say certain things. Now you don't have to say it verbatim. Like, don't worry about that. Like, some things might not sound natural in your voice. That's okay. Switch it up however you need to. Just make sure that the content is staying the same. We're retaining the meaning. So looking at this particular activity plan, we, say, we see that the girls start out by saying the Girl Scout Promise and Law. As we know, that's what we do for our opening ceremony. And even though girls aren't in a group, I would encourage caregivers to say the promise in law with their girl to start off any Girl Scout activities they're doing at home, because that's a cue to girls. That says to them, okay, this is Girl Scout time. And then the content of these meetings is designed to be really approachable for anyone who would conduct these activities with girls. Like you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to know everything about astronomy 
to do space science adventure. You don't have to know about coding in order to carry out items and coding badges. Like you don't need to worry about that. Parents shouldn't be worried about that either. But at the same time, they might find some, that they, they learn some stuff along the way. So that's kind of cool. Now, when you're in your activity plan, I, I mentioned that there are some places where you can make choices as to what you can do for your activities. And you might end up seeing some activities in red. And that means you need to select an activity before parents can carry it out. So um, just make sure you go through all of the meetings that you're putting into your year plan um, for, for this time and making sure that there are no more red activities and you've made um, activity choices. So because we gotta do things a little differently now, try to select the activity that would be um, easiest to do at home. Like we don't want anything with like really, really weird materials that people are gonna have to go get. Um, we don't really want people going out getting anything right now. Um, but this is gonna require you guys to make a judgment call on the material. And if none of the activities would be easy to implement at home, you might wanna suggest an activity that parents can do with their girls that's based off of one of the activity choices. Like again, making some modifications. So the place where you select the activity, this is in the agenda section. So in the meeting plan tab, this is at the very bottom. And I'll show you, you guys this in a bit. So for Space Science Adventure or one, we see we have three activity choices. We have model the moon, make a moon art project, and meet the moon phases. And as I said before, for this meeting, model the moon probably wouldn't be a good one because it requires that three inch styrofoam ball. Um, the other two would probably be simpler uh, because Meet the Moon Phases has a meeting aid that you can utilize and meeting aids are what we're going to talk about next. And making a moon art project just requires art supplies. So I promised you guys we would talk about meeting aids. This is kind of the last piece of the puzzle here. And meeting aids are really helpful PDFs or their videos even that give girls a visual aid or they could include an activity within them. And all badges have their own unique set of meeting aids. And there's also an additional bank of general meeting aids that you can use um, and that parents can take advantage of. For example, the Girl Scout Promise and Law template, which is actually um, attached to this meeting. Pretty helpful. So that's everything parents are gonna need in order to effectively implement a Girl Scout troop meeting. So now we're gonna go through the process of setting up your troops year plan. Um, for those of you who haven't done that, um, you, you don't know how to navigate Volunteer Toolkit, totally fine. We're going to go over it right now. So, Liz, uh, before I ask a question really quick. Yep. Okay. Um, so, Jenny asked a question. I think it'd be good for the whole group to hear it. But she asked, do parents need to log in info to get into the Volunteer Toolkit? They absolutely do. So, um, there, I'll, I'll show you guys how to log into the actual volunteer toolkit real quick because I'm using a demo site. So um, the way they'll do that is they'll go onto gssem.org, so our website. They'll click this gold My GS link over here on the right-hand side of the page and go to volunteer toolkit. And then what they'll do is they'll use the... Um, the email that they have on file with Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan. So whatever email they use up to uh, use to sign up their kid. Below that, they'll need to enter in whatever their password is. And they'll probably be like, well, I don't have a password. That is A-OK. -okay. What they will do, let me get my spotlight right here. They will hit this forgot your password button. And then they'll get an email from, um, uh, the sender will be member community. So just tell them to be on the lookout for that. Sometimes it winds up in spam folders. So just make sure that they're, they're aware that they should check their spam if they don't see it. And if they continue to have issues um, with that email, not getting it, what they can do is they can contact our customer care team. All right. So that's how you do it from the GSSEM website. I am using a different website to kind of show you how this works. So let's stick with Brownie. So when you're first setting up your troops year plan, what you're going to see first is the explore tab. And the explore tab prompts you to make a choice. 
And this choice could go really either way. It's either um, go with one of the pre-selected year plan tracks that GSUSA has put together. They're generally pretty well-rounded. Or you could choose your own adventure, build your own year plan. And um, generally, if, if you're, um, if you're new to the volunteer toolkit, I generally recommend the pre-selected year plan tracks. However, we need to be especially mindful of um, the activities that we're having folks do at home. So building your own year plan actually may be the best way to go for this one. And we'll give you some suggestions for different badge series that work really, really well. So I have, a, time, I have a question, I'm sorry. Oh, um, no, you're fine. I joined late as, a, as an additional troop leader and then I've been helping. Somehow mm -hmm. our troop plan has been set and we can not reset it. So I don't even have this tab because it says the troops year is set and I click reset my year plan and it just goes to a blank page. So I think that's why I don't personally have a toolkit set up because I can't make it do anything. Are, are you set as a troop leader or a troop support volunteer? I don't know. How do I find Well, we can type that offline. I don't want to take everybody's okay. time. Maybe um, I'll what, ask you at the end. What, what I would recommend doing actually is connecting with your troop support specialist on that one. They can help you through that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the time being, I'm just going to use one of the pre-selected year plan tracks. Um, if you're doing this in the fall and um, you're able to connect with your girls on like what sorts of things generally they'd want to do. Um, the the pre-selected year plan tracks are really great. So I'm going to select space science and outdoor adventure because that has our space science adventure one in it. So it just asks you to confirm your selection and then that's what I just did right there. So once you have all of your meetings set, whether you put them in one by one or you select a year plan track, this is kind of what you get in the end. So um, you can rearrange your meetings however you want. You can um, see these little orange bars. These are called milestones. They're just little reminders about important dates in Girl Scout world. And you can also set dates for your meeting. So I'm just going to set some kind of random date just so you can see how it works. Now, when you're setting this up, especially if you're going with a pre-selected year plan track that has like 15 meetings maybe, um, you might get a message like this. The year plan for a troop ends June 30th. The date you selected will result in six meetings. Would you like to continue or X number of meetings? Basically what this is saying is there's a cutoff date on June 30th and we're going to cut off some of your meetings. Would you like to continue? For the, for the time being, I'm saying yes. But um, if you needed to add something past June 30th, you absolutely can do that. You just have to do it kind of one by one. And for some reason, the system has been being a little finicky. Oh, these check boxes, by the way, these just say, I don't want to schedule a meeting the whole week of this holiday. That's what that is. There we go. There's my dates. All right. So now that we have dates, we can do some kind of cool stuff if we go back into manage calendar. Um, one of the really helpful things that we can do is combine meetings. So all you have to do is click this little radio button here and then select the meetings that you want to combine. Like say, if we wanted to spend a week having parents working on Space Science Adventurer, we could do this. And then we select our date that we want to put our combined meeting and then we save it. So it's not gonna like put them all together under one heading. It's just gonna put them on the same date because you need um, the different meetings for the different activities, if that makes sense. But yeah, this is kind of what it looks like when it's all said and done here. And then if you need to go in and um, combine other badges, you totally can do that. Um, important thing when you're adding meetings manually though, is that most badges have at least two meetings associated with them. Um, some have three, like Space Science Adventurer. The only ones that are like one meeting um, are Daisy Petals. 
So this is the year plan tab right here. Um, one more thing I want to show you here actually is adding an activity. So thinking about our celebrate and share activity, our uh, virtual space party, we can put that in here if we wanted to. So we could put in our activity name, uh, space party, location name, you could give it a link, Let's say go to meeting, um, cost, you could put free, location address, link, and then set a date for it. And a time, describe it if you want. And if you add that activity, it'll show up in blue. All right. And then if you wanted to add any additional badges, journeys, whatever, you can do that through this little search function right here. And you can separate it out by level if you want. Okay. Now let's get into a meeting. So this is the meeting plan tab. This is kind of what I was talking about up front where all your resources are going to be. Um, you can replace the meeting. You can delete the meeting if you want. So up here, um, let me get my little spotlight. We got our requirements. And this is where you're going to need to click in order to expand it. So boom, there's all those requirements. But you've seen them already. Under planning materials, you got your meeting overview. Parents can see this. And you can see all of these green links here are clickable. But if we download, again, they're not going to be clickable. So make sure the parents are going on in order to get what they need. The materials list, parents are also going to be able to see this. And there's that red activity. And then parents are not going to be able to see, again, the activity plan. So make sure you download it with uh, this right here. Make sure parents have that. And you'll want to make sure before you download it that you get rid of this red activity and we fill it in with something um, something feasible to do at home. Manage communications, this is exclusively for you. Parents aren't going to be able to see this. Parents aren't going to be able to do anything with it. Um, if you want to send out a reminder email, like, hey, remember, we're doing space science adventure this week. Uh, be sure to work with your girls on this. Uh, ask any questions if you need to. Here are the meeting aids. Record attendance and achievements. This you would use if um, you hear from a parent and they say, yeah, my kid did this. They, they earned this badge. Then you can just make sure that their name is checked under attendance for all, um, all of the meetings for that badge and that um, the achievement box is checked as well which you're not going to see in the one meeting, you'll see it in the two or the three meeting, whatever the last one is. Then you got all your meeting aids down here. And I'll show you one of them. I'll show you phases of the moon. So if you chose the, um, the learn about the phases of the moon activity, this is what you would use for that one. They're just nice little PDFs. And then your agenda's down here. For parent purposes, this is like, they don't really need it, but for your purposes, it is important to take a look at it because this is where you select the activities. So let's say we wanna do meet the moon phases. So we'll select that. If there's anything you wanna tell parents, you can put it in this meeting note section. But if we go back up now that we selected an activity, we go back to say the materials list, we'll see that activity three is no longer red and it has all of the materials that are needed for meet the phases of the moon. So that is everything in action. Um, real quick, I just want to go through the other things that you can find in here. My troop, this is mostly for you. Parents just see their own girl. It's basically um, their contact information, but you see everybody's. And then there's the resources tab. You got some resources that are broken up by program level and some that are by topic area. And then if you log into the real environment, you'll also see the finances tab. Um, that allows you to record troop finances. We're not going to get into that here, though. 
So now that we have gone through the volunteer toolkit, does anybody have any questions about how to use it, what it's used for, any of that? Yeah, so we have a question in the chat log from Jenny Davis. Um, she's asking if the email function still shows the sender as Girl Scouts at GSUSA. And she's saying, she's asking because um, prior, like that email just goes to parents like spam. So she was wondering if that's still like who the message would come from if you use the email function. I actually don't know that one off the top of my head. Um, I I think it comes from, it's supposed to come from you. That was GSUSA's original intention. But I need to do a little bit of digging on that one. Okay. And then Amelia Vega said that she is still confused about how to add multiple levels to VTK. Okay, multi-level. Um, I'm not going to mince words with multi-level because it is a little difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, to set up um, to set up a year plan for multiple levels. However, if you're just doing it for the short term, um, so wait, Amelia, do you have um, is is your troop set up as multi-level in VTK? Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, when you go to the Explore tab, all you're going to see is stuff for like journeys. So you're going to have to build your own stuff. So probably what it's going to take, um, and this is generally what I recommend to multi-level troops, is put your year plan on paper first. So figure out, okay, what are the brownies going to do? What are the juniors going to do? What are the cadets going to do? And let's kind of sync it all up in, in ways that make sense. So like if, if you decided that you want the, the brownies to start off doing life skill stuff, you probably want the juniors and cadets doing life skill stuff as well and kind of separate it out into units that are um, either like within the same series and I'll show you what I mean by the same series. And um, just real quick, I want to be respectful of your guys' time, but I can already tell we're going to go over. So um, if you need to leave early, then um, do whatever you got to do. It's totally fine. Okay, so this is what I mean by series. So if you look on the left-hand side of this, you'll see that there's series like artist, athlete, citizen. Um, and this is actually something that I want you to keep in mind for um, a couple slides from now. But um, you can kind of sync them up so that girls are, um, are working on the same series. And if they're not working on the same series, at least keep it within the same pillar. So STEM, outdoors, life skills, entrepreneurship. So that's, that's how I would recommend doing it, Amelia, is um, just kind of keeping it to similar topics for, for different levels. And then when you go in and add them, You'll use your filters to grab the daisy meetings or grab the brownie meetings or whatever whatever levels you have in your troop and just get them individually. So I hope that helps. And if you want to connect with me after this, then absolutely go for it. All right. We got anything else, Courtney? Nope. Oh, she just said thank you. All right. Any other questions? Um, no, not from any volunteers. All right, let's keep her moving. Okay, so speaking of those series, I, <coughs> sorry, ooh, gotta mute myself. Ooh, sorry about that, guys, the wrong pipe. Um, so in terms of what I think, uh, based on what I've gone through um, in badges and whatever, um, these are what I would recommend doing, the different series. So daisy petals are going to be pretty good, and that's because they're very reliant on the stories that are included with them. And you can get those stories through the volunteer toolkit. Uh, cook's a really good one because you got to have food at home. So um, 
uh, brownie snacks, junior simple meals, those are going to be really easy ones to do at home. Um, once you start getting into higher levels, though, it could be kind of hit or miss. Like you might be able to do new cuisines, but locavore might be a, a hard ask for, uh, for seniors right now. Um, artists, outdoor art, those are really great because they use basic art supplies. Or in the case of outdoor art, things in your backyard. Um, storytelling and creative play are really awesome because they rely on girls' imaginations. And th there's a lot of kind of playing pretend there, especially in creative play. And um, this one sounds like it might be a little intense, but it's really not, I promise you. Coding for good is a really great one because it's reliant on digital resources. And um, I actually think this would be a really good one to do with your girls because everyone's going to have their own device, ideally, um, in order to do it. At least, uh, at least a phone would be would would be good for that as well. Now, again, just a reminder: whenever you're collecting meetings to put in your volunteer toolkit year plan, just making sure you're grabbing all of the meetings associated with the badge. You're grabbing like um, like maybe painter one and two, jeweler one and two, space science adventurer one, two, three. And one, one more reminder that you're probably going to have to spell out for caregivers is that girls are only to work on the material that's appropriate for their own age level. So, for example, if a daisy has an old, old, excuse me, older brownie sister at home, the daisy should not be working on brownie level material and she cannot earn a brownie level badge. And that works vice versa. So even though a brownie may have been a daisy before, um, a brownie cannot go back and earn anything she did not earn as a daisy during her time as a daisy. All right. So now let's move on to some tools for virtual activities. Now that we talked about putting meetings in parents' hand, if you want to try this stuff yourself, um, you can do that with some of the digital tools we're going to talk about right now. And with the activities not occurring in person, um, actually what I would, um, what I would caution you to do is to do one or two activities at a time. Like, don't get crazy with it. Like, this this is kind of difficult for, for girls to kind of wrap their heads around, especially at younger levels, um, because it, it involves them sitting a lot, um, maybe navigating technology that they're not quite used to. Um, so there's that piece of it. And then there's also, it can be taxing on you as a leader. I know a lot of you guys are working right now. You're working full time. Um, and even for you guys who aren't, like you're trying to homeschool your kids, maybe um, you're doing all kinds of other stuff just to make sure that your house is running. It's a lot to ask of you right now. So be kind to yourselves and do not stretch yourselves too thin. If you only get through one activity at a time, at least the girls are doing something. So, um, Remember, we talked a, bit, a little bit about this kind of in passing when I was doing the volunteer toolkit piece, um, but if you are going to do virtual activities, be sure to update the meeting location um, in the volunteer toolkit with the appropriate links so that everybody knows where to go. If you don't utilize the volunteer toolkit, you could also do like a Facebook group or whatever communication channels you have for your troop. So we're going to start off with Facebook because that's probably one of the most ubiquitous resources there are in terms of adoption. So if you're going to be doing activities with girls, you're going to have them follow along, or maybe you're doing a tutorial for parents, you're showing them how to do something. Facebook Live could be a really, really good option because um, like there's commenting. You can have a little bit of back and forth there. Um, but in terms of like like visuals, it's just going to be you. So keep that in mind. And we got a link to a tutorial video here. We're not going to go through it right now. Um, but if you find that Facebook Live is a good option for you, you can absolutely watch that video later. There's also the option for group video chat. Um, if you got a small group, maybe you got a group of older girls, it's pretty small. Or um, you want to have troop governance run in absence of being able to be at an actual troop meeting. Um, you can get five people max on that group video chat if you want to. Um, 
All right. You also got Skype. Skype is really good for um, for small groups, so it doesn't get too crazy. But you can actually accommodate 50 people max on Skype. Um, that kind of blew my mind when I was researching it, but apparently you can. Um, there is, however, a four-hour time limit. Um, please don't be on for four hours. You're going to drive yourselves crazy that way. Um, you also have an 100 hours max per month. And we also have a video tutorial here. All right, uh, Google Hangouts, this is another uh, video chat kind of app thing. It'll support up to 25 people as long as you want. You will need to download some stuff in order to do it on your phone. And we've got a little, uh, little video here in case you want to explore that. And some oops. Oh, they got some anime. I took these from another council, I won't lie to you, did not know that there were some animations on here. So let's just go through these. So here on the first one, I'm by, you download the app, you log in, I use my mail account to log in, and then you're going to need to click this little button right here to add more people. Oops, sorry. My B. Um, they got some sound on it too. Um, those are my friends from uh, Girl Scouts of Southern Alabama. Okay. So another one we got here, we have Zoom. Zoom accommodates as many people as you need. Um, however, there is a 40 minute time limit, but that should work for most everybody. If you're only doing one or two activities, should be totally fine. Um, and that'll accommodate even the largest troops. And there's another tutorial video here as well. Um, but speaking of Zoom, you may have heard some uh, stories of something called Zoom bombing. And um, we had one staff member who was um, at, at another council who reported that a meeting for his school got hijacked and the presentation all of a sudden started showing some disturbing content. So just make sure you're, um, you're sharing your links privately. And um, if you do end up using Zoom, these directions are going to be available for you to go through just to kind of protect against that. And then there's also WhatsApp. WhatsApp is another tool that you can use for video chat. Um, WhatsApp is most comfortable on uh, in a mobile setting, but you can use it for desktop as well. And um, we have a tutorial video for that. If you're doing video chat, that supports up to 16 people. Group call, if you're just doing voice, that will support up to 32. Now, when you go to do this, um, just to make sure you're setting yourself up for some for success, we got some best practices here for you when you're doing your digital meetings. Number one is do a parent meeting first. You want to get parents up to speed um, with kind of what you're doing and make sure you're working out the technology roadblocks because it's never going to go perfect the first time on your end or on their end. Um, might not even go perfectly the second time, but we can get most of the most of the kinks worked out if we do a parent meeting first. And that's something I, I really want to drive home. Uh, when you're doing things in a digital environment, speaking of someone who does webinars for a living, it's not always going to be perfect. And that's okay. It's totally fine. Um, I think right now, more than ever, we just got to cut people some slack and realize that we're all doing the best we can. So number two, planning for variety. Planning any activities um, you, you want to do well in advance if it involves a badge so that um, we know what we're doing. And we've got a different uh, kind of flavor of activities every so often. So maybe one week we're working on STEM, another week we're working on life skills. Using girls' names can go a long way because girls may be feeling kind of isolated right now. And if you call a girl by her name, that can mean a lot to her. It can make her feel seen and heard. This one's real important. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have group agreements, a set of rules that group girls have agreed to uphold when conducting a troop meeting. Um, we kind of have to start from scratch when we're doing it in a digital environment because the rules are a little different um, or the, the environment's different, therefore the rules have to be different. So um, talk to your girls up front about kind of what the expectations are and make sure that you're getting input from them as well. Next, incorporating traditions. Um, this has the potential to be really awkward. Again, I, 
I conduct troop leader, co-leader training, so does Courtney. Um, and when we do that, we say the Girl Scout promise and law by ourselves. It's a little weird, but everyone else is saying it too. So just keep that in mind. It's not as weird as you think. And then if, if you have a kid in your troop, try to participate separately from your own girl because that can be a distraction to you. And then it can also be a distraction for your girl as well. So if you have the ability, try and um, do your thing separately from her. So does anybody have any questions about the materials that we went over or the resources, I should say? How are we doing? We don't have any new questions in the chat box. All right. Then we will close her on out. So there are a lot of ways you can go about bringing activities to your troop when they can't meet in person. And going forward, I just want to mention a few more things that I'd like for you guys to consider when you're continuing Girl Scouts from a distance. So for those of you who have older girls, I am delighted that we do have some folks that have older girls on today. Um, when it comes to engaging older girls from a distance, it's actually a little easier because girls are adept enough to use technology with little help um, from, from a parent or a caregiver. And there are things that you can do to make it a little more interesting for them and take the pressure off of you. You can have girls explore badges on their own, uh, whether it's like looking through their Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting and see what's avail available to them. You can have them hop on the volunteer toolkit and just kind of give them a smattering of badges in the year plan and say, okay, pick one, see which one you want to do. And then they can execute their own activities. You can even maybe pair them up and have the girls meet individually to work on activities amongst themselves and have them, have them um, maybe at a court of awards or a bridging ceremony, have them come together and share what they learned. Um, you can also have girls maybe consider working on a high awards project, silver or gold award. Um, silver is either solo or in small teams, gold is solo only. But silver and gold awards, those are those look amazing on girls' college applications. And they have plenty of time to think about it right now, a, um, an issue that impacts their community and how to address it in a sustainable way. Um, so if you want to learn more about the highest awards, bronze, silver, gold, I wouldn't recommend bronze right now, but silver and gold would probably be good because um, it's, again, a solo or small team kind of endeavor. Um, you can look that up on the highest awards section of our website and the link's right there. You can also have girls work on some sort of um, some sort of project as a whole, have one girl do like a piece of it. Like um, probably the best way I could describe this, this is like, you know how girls will sometimes work on quilt squares and then you put it together and you have like a giant unity quilt. So kind of like a project like that, it could be an art project, it could be some sort of educational display um, on a topic of the girls choosing, um, but just something that kind of like everybody's doing their own thing, but we're bringing it together to make it something big and amazing. And just because staff isn't in the office anymore, um, that does not mean the training train has stopped. Clearly it has not because we're here today. Um, but we still have plenty of training opportunities available to help you guys be the best Girl Scout leaders you can possibly be. Um, if you go to gssem.org slash learning, that link is right there on this slide. Um, you can access our library of short and snappy trainings. These are trainings that are under 15 minutes long. They're available on demand. You can do them whenever you want. And there's, um, there's a lot of really great stuff. We actually just added one on ability um, that I think came out really well. So um, you might want to check one of those out at the very least, see what they're about. And in addition to our online trainings, we also have some webinars coming up. We have some grade level trainings and right now is an excellent time to take grade level trainings, especially if you are a bridging troop. So um, like for example, if you got a Brownie troop now, they're gonna be moving up to juniors. You might want to take that junior grade level training that we have coming up on the 16th or maybe in May. So these are the dates, we have them in the slides. If you want them, you can find them on the calendar and register. So we have um, all, all the grade levels that we offer. We currently do not have senior ambassador, um, but if you have daisies through cadets or will have daisies through cadets, then we got you covered. 
Also on May 28th, we're gonna be having a, um, a webinar about the finance report. Every year, troops have to fill out a finance report to report on um, kind of what's going on with the troop bank account. We're gonna go over how to do that in the volunteer toolkit and also how you can utilize the VTK finance tab. That's on May 28th. Now, in the wake of all this, so COVID-19 and being at home all the time, uh, GSUSA has a lot of resources that, and they're getting more and more every day. It's really, really great. Um, they got badge instructions, they got some videos um, that you can see right here for, again, Space Science Adventurer. Um, and there's also, a, it's not quite a blog, but um, it's just kind of like a, a holding tank of like really good things to consider called tips for troop leaders. And this is something that has been going on well before all of this, but there's there's even some stuff about how you can engage girls virtually in tips for troop leaders. So definitely give that a gander. And then we're getting more stuff by the day too. Um, I know someone mentioned go at home. Um, we got that going on right now with some new patch programs. We also have Keep Calm and Girl Scout on. So Go at Home, that is kind of an outdoor sort of thing. And Keep Calm and Girl Scout on is very related to um, helping girls and families um, navigate things that are impacted by COVID-19. We're also hosting some online recruitment events via Facebook Live. So if you know anybody who is interested in joining Girl Scouts, um, recruitment is still recruiting. They're still doing their thing. So direct those folks that you know want to join Girl Scouts to one of those recruitment events. They're all over the calendar of events right now. And then this isn't set up just yet. It's, it's under construction still, but um, we're going to have all of these resources, um, things that girls can do at home and tips for you guys. That's all going to be on gssem.org slash virtual. So that's what I got for you guys right now. Um, and I want to hear from you. Um, how, how are you guys hoping to engage your troop virtually now that you've, you've heard some different ways that you can do that? Would anyone like to share? Liv, by okay. chance, can you also press the green, like unmute all? Because I'm pressing it, but it's still showing that they're muted by an organizer. I, I actually don't have that capability. Okay. Everyone okay. well should have the capability to unmute. Okay, well, we could just have it be a self-reflection. That's that's fine. I hope you guys um, found some value in, um, in some of the tools that have been presented today. Um, so we'll stay on if anybody has any questions, but we're over and I wanna be respectful of your time or as respectful of your time as humanly possible. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, it's uh, what you guys are doing is really amazing right now. I hope you guys stay safe, or stay safe, stay strong. And um, we're all gonna get through this together and we're gonna be all the better for it. Like I said, we'll be here answering questions if you need us, but if, if you're good, have a great day. Liz? Yes? This is Cheryl from Trenton. Um, so I'm brand new leader and I don't have a leader's guide and I talked with Elizabeth and she said she didn't have any. So I'm wondering if anybody out there anywhere has a leader's guide for juniors that I could somehow get. Um, are you, are you referring to a girl's guide to girl scouting? Um, it's actually the leader's guide. So, you know, brand new for, uh, for leaders to help leaders get through, um, you know. So, um, To get the leader's guide, what you can do is go to gssem.org slash leader's guide. Oh, it's online? You will find the new leader's guide to success. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you're talking about the binder, uh, yeah. for right now, we, we can't really do anything about that since it's a physical resource. Yeah, I just didn't know that Elizabeth said she she had some some sometimes she had them in her car, but she doesn't have any. So I just didn't know if anybody had one somewhere that I could somehow get a hold of the binder. Now, yeah, you're referring to the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting. That's the binder. Okay. Um, we unfortunately we can't do anything about that right now. Okay. With it being a physical resource, because those are all in the office and we gotta deliver it and Okay. But once we come out of this, we will absolutely make sure that you get your Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and the content actually, you can find anything. Um, like that's that's just basically, like it goes over the history of Girl Scouts, traditions, things like that. And then it has like little badge inserts. And you can use, um, you can use the volunteer toolkit for that purpose. You really don't need the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting if you have the volunteer toolkit. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. What else you guys got for me? All right, not hearing anything, so we'll go ahead and close her on out. Uh, thank you guys again so much for being here and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, you too.